beautiful day the Lord has made. Amen? So let's stand and rejoice in it. And even though the devil is trying to thwart the Lord's plans, that this church is still alive. Amen? Show our excitement for Jesus this morning. Let's lift it up. Here we go. Hope erupting, darkness shaking, faith is arising. We know, we know, we know. Our heart beats racing. Living in your freedom, joy overflowing. We know, we know, we know, and we know, we know, we know. And our hope forever is the name of Jesus. We are free and you are with us. The church is
guys can be seated. That's a fun song. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you're visiting with us for the first time, welcome to Seven Mountains Church. It's a great time to be a part of what we're doing here. Last week at Pentecost Sunday, it was awesome. I'm actually going to, at the end of our announcements, going to talk about some confirmations that we got from words that were given last week. Because uh, if we don't have the confirmation for miracles, for healings, uh, for words of knowledge and words of wisdom that are given, um, people wonder. And I don't immediately jump to without doubt and unbelief, but how many of you know that God is a God of confirmation? Amen. So, a couple things before we talk about some of those testimonies. Uh, You can find us on Facebook and see that little icon up there that says Seven Mountains Church? You can download that right on your phone. Um, We're actually going to have some time for notes today that if you don't have that app on your phone, if you want those notes, you're literally going to have to take a picture of it because it's your homework assignment. We're just going to fly through the slides. So if you don't want to do that, uh, you can download the app and it's all right there under notes. So, I mean, you have a million other apps on your phone. How many of you know you have a bunch of apps on your phone that you never even use and you wonder why they're on there? This one you can actually use at least once a week on Sunday. Um, But we have access to the message uh, that is given and things like that. So, I mean, it's fruitful to have it. You can add your own notes in, I believe. Uh, My wife knows the app better than I do. So just go to the app store and type in Seven Mountains Church and that icon should come right up and you can put that right on your phone. It's completely free. We're also on Instagram and every uh, message that we have is on YouTube and uh, we just started this last week where the entire service is on there, which is awesome because how many of you know, and, and, and I've been to enough meetings where I know some people are just on this, but like when you go to a meeting or something like that and somebody gives you like a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom or somebody's praying over you, you're like, man, I really wish that I had that on recording. And most people are really getting the hang of it that you always have somebody who's designated. I know when I go to meetings, uh, Gail York is always on top of that. She's got her phone out, and she records it, and then she'll contact you and send it to you. And that is a blessing to have. Uh, So any words and any part of the service that when we flow in the Spirit, uh, that is all going to be on YouTube. So if you're like, man, what was that one prophetic word that was given by that one person? I don't remember their name and all of that. You can literally go on YouTube and just drag your icon over to the part where we flow in the gifts, and you can listen to it again. So we're going to have our entire services on YouTube from now on. Amen. Um. We wanted to promote this again, that if you buy anything through Amazon, which, you know, a lot of people are doing now, if you go to Amazon Smile and type in Seven Mountains Church, whatever you purchase, we get a percentage of that. It doesn't cost you any more money. It costs Amazon money. And we get a piece of that. So um, at first, when my wife was telling me, because if you can see, you know, it's kind of small, it says we get 0.5%. That seems very minuscule. But people have been doing that. And... um, When I say substantial, what was it, like $45, $50? Over $50. And that was over a significant amount of time, but that's money that Amazon doesn't have. Not we're trying to jip Amazon, but it's money that came in just by simply going to Amazon, smile through your purchase instead of just directly through Amazon. So it helps the church. It helps um, for us to, you know, we can apply that money to, uh, how many of you like air conditioning in here? We can apply that to our AC bill as the summer gets hotter. So uh, we appreciate you doing that. Okay, this is new. Uh, Seven MC, so Seven Mountains Church Spiritual Gifts, and I have, if you don't know what that is, um, you're not with the times. That is the messenger signal, uh, symbol on your phone. So if you have Facebook, uh, you actually, you don't even have to have Facebook. You can just have Messenger. You can just download the app. Uh, we have this group because what we wanted to say was, and I, and I prayed about this and asked the Lord, and some of you may have heard this speech before, uh, but I said, Lord, in Acts, they were a community. They took in all of their meals together. They lived together. It says they were daily in the temple. Um, so it would be like what we experience here on Sunday morning. They were doing that on the daily in the temple. 
And so I said, it was a different culture back then, Lord. I said, we don't do that today. Whether that's right or wrong, doesn't matter. We're, that's just not where the culture's at. And this is when he showed me this, that what we do here on Sunday when we flow in the gifts, we can do that all week. So all you have to do is let me know or send a email into the church website, um, on the church email. You can text me directly. Uh, the, the number that's on our website is a Google number that's, uh, that gets sent to my phone. So you can text that Google number and it will come directly to me and just say, I want to be on this messenger chain. Now, this is going to be very laser beam focused on operating in spiritual gifts. So instead of telling you what it is, because that's all that it is, I'm going to tell you what it's not. It's not a place to swap recipes. It's not a place, and, I, and I'm saying this with love, hear, hear my heart. It's not a place to say, will you please pray for my cousin's brother's uncle, okay? This is not a prayer chain. We actually have a prayer group that prays. If you have prayers, you can send it directly into the website. And we have a group that prays, I mean, that are specifically devoted to prayer. This is a place where if you get a word and you feel like it's for the people on Messenger, then you share that on there. A word of knowledge, a word of wisdom, a prophetic word. If you know it's for a specific person, just send them a instant message thing. Just send it for them. Don't name them and say it. Um, because how many of you know that sometimes those words are only meant for that person and not for everybody else's ear? Amen. And I'm not saying it has to be a, a bad thing. Okay. So if you know it's for a specific person, message them directly. But like what we do here, if it's a general word that it's given, that's what this is for so that we can flow in gifts all throughout the week. So let's say if you have a dream about something and that needs to go on there, you don't have the dream Monday night and go, I really hope I remember this so that I can share it next Sunday. You can instantly, when you are awoken from that dream and you feel like the Lord's saying, this needs to go on the 7MC Spiritual Gifts Messenger, if it's 2 in the morning, you can just type it on there so it's fresh in your mind and send it. And please, anything that's on there, if that's a confirming word to you, chime in and go, oh my goodness, I was just praying for that. That message was for me. And share that because it helps other people that are stepping out in their gifts to understand that, oh, you know, I heard the Lord correctly. And that's why um, I'm going to use all of this to piggyback into giving some confirmation about some words that were given last week. And these are ones that just came to me, okay? There could be lots of other things that were confirmed, but people that either directly shared with me or somebody said, oh, this person shared this with me, so I'm letting you know. Um, again, this is a great place to put that on there because then I'm aware and then I can share it with all of you. There was a word given uh, that that the Lord is, and, and forgive me, I don't have the exact words, but basically that the Lord is going to be moving in some people's lives in the areas of the arts, writing, painting, those kind of things. I had several people come up to me, and one couple in particular that said, we have been praying about that for a while, about doing some writing, and that was our confirming word. Amen? So let's give Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the praise. That was just one couple in particular, but I know several people said that. The other word that I got multiple confirmations for is it said that there are some people, um, and again, I'm paraphrasing that, like basically might feel like they're too old or they've moved past their prime in ministry and that kind of stuff, and that, you know, the Holy Spirit is, is reigniting that and that you're, you know, not just to come here and sit and do nothing, that the Lord is working in you and stirring those things. I had several people say that that word was for them too, and that's how they were feeling in, in this season in their life. So can we give the Holy Spirit praise for that as well? Amen. And, again, and like I said, there was probably some other ones. Those are just the ones that specifically came to me and I wanted to mention. So um, praise the Lord. We are going to move on our time of message, and I'm going to endeavor. Oh, the other, uh, I don't know if I'd put it on miracle level, uh, but I know my, my wife talked to me about it. Uh, my message was kept to about 29 minutes last week. So a lot of people think that was a move of God. Yeah, you can, give, you can give the Holy Spirit a praise for that. I won't be offended. But 
but I know it was the Lord because the longer that I preached was the less time that we had to flow in the areas of worship and the gifts and things like that. So I'm going to endeavor to keep doing that. Um, but not always because we have to go with the flow, right? Amen. Okay. We're in a, uh, I don't know if this is a series anymore. I just endeavor to hear from God. So it may be a series. It may not. We'll just see when we show up next week. Um, but th- we're going to talk about this specifically today. It's called Beyond Flesh and Blood. And here is what I was talking about, about the homework portion. Because there's many things I like to share that the Lord has put on my heart, and I don't have time to reference all of the scriptures. I'm a Bible guy. I don't like to preach anything that I can't find several places in scripture. How many of you know that that seems to be a dying thing in churches today? We are moving away from the word of God for the sake of culture. And I promise you here at Seven Mountains, we will never do that. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. And his word is unchanging. So go ahead, go ahead, Kyla. Go to the next slide. We're going to be talking about spiritual perception. Uh, That's what we're going to be talking about today. Go ahead and go to the next one. Because we're going to fly through these, babe. Okay, so here's your homework. So if you're not going to download the app, here's your time to get out your phone and take pictures of the slides if you want to do homework. Go ahead, Kyla. And, and just stay on each one for about 20 seconds. So um, this is one of the scriptures that we're going to be doing. And um, go ahead and go to the next one, sweetheart, because it'll have the... So there's the scripture reference. And then those are all of the things that are kind of taken out as a broad... Um, a broad pull apart from there. And, but I encourage you to actually go to that scripture and get your own revelation. Amen. Um, I'm not a big fan of piggybacking on other people's revelation. Uh, it's good to teach that way. Like if I'm like, Oh man, that was really good. I want to teach on that. But how many of you know that if the revelation isn't revelation to you, it doesn't matter. So if I come to you, I've seen, I've, I've done this in my own house. I'm like, oh dear, you won't believe this. I got this word from the Lord and I start sharing it. And she's like, oh, that's nice. And I'm like, no, apparently you don't understand. The Lord showed me this and then this connects with this and this and this. And she's like, I understand. It's great. And I'm like frustrated. But again, what am I doing? I'm trying to get her to have the revelation that I had. And so if you have a revelation, please share it with other people because then people know, oh my goodness, the Lord is speaking to us today. But don't be offended if they, or if you're jumping up and down or like you're just laughing uncontrollably because like the joy of the Lord is hitting you with this revelation and they're just like, that's nice. Um, They're excited for you, but they didn't get the revelation. Perhaps because it was just for you to share, but it wasn't for them. Does this make sense? Okay, so that's why I'm saying I encourage you to go and read this. These are just specific things that I pulled out. So if you haven't taken a picture of that uh, yet, you missed it. So uh, let's go on to the next one. Here's the second set of scriptures. Go ahead, Kyla. And then here's the things that are pulled off. Again, if you miss the pictures or whatever, you can download the app. Everything that's up on these slides Uh, will be in the app under the notes section. Okay, next one. Okay, I think that's all the homework. So here's where we're going to start. If you have your tablets, your phones, your Bibles, whatever you have, let's go to Matthew 6.23. Actually, that's incorrect. It should be Matthew 6, 22 and 23. So um, praise the Lord for grace and forgiveness. So it should be 6, 22 and 23. Okay, I'm going to read from the NASB, the New American Standard. The eye is the lamp of the body. 
So then, if your eye is clear, your whole body will be full of light. If your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light that is in you is darkness, how great is this darkness? Now, this can be a little confusing. Um, this, the, the reason I have the Luke 1134 reference, we, if I have time, we may read that. That's the same reference. Um, it's just referenced in Luke as well. Now, I am a researcher. I like to look up the Greek and the Hebrew, and I like to look in multiple translations. That's my busy work during the week, but it's fun for me, and I know that's weird. It's like people that like to, you know, do calculus for fun. Um, but I, I tell you the truth. If you are a researcher, when you look up the Greek and the Hebrew and see what those words mean in the original language, there's so much richness there that the English language fails to bring forth. Does this make sense? So, in the old King James, it says, the eye is the lamp of the body. If your eye, and it uses the word single, it doesn't use the word clear. And depending on how that word is translated, it's still the same thing. It means single or clear. It can also be translated simple. Now, I'm going to give you what this passage means, and then we're going to take it apart a little bit, because I believe this scripture is very relevant to what is going on in our culture today. And when I say what is going on, I mean with racism, I mean with rioting, I mean with looting, I mean with COVID, I mean everything. And so what I would like to do today is endeavor to show you and help you get the revelation that this will change your thinking about what's going on today. And some of you may already have it. So if, if you do, like Peter says, I'm just here to remind you again. Amen. Amen. So what this is talking about is perception. That's why we're talking about spiritual perception today. If you perceive, if your perception is single, if it is clear, then your whole being will be full of light. In the old King James, it says, but if, you're, if the eye is, and it uses the word evil. Now, this is strange in our culture because we think as evil as like really terrible, terrible things like murder or hurting children or abortion or things like that. But evil... If you look at it, all the places that it's mentioned, basically means not meeting God's standard. Let me say it like this. There's a scripture that Jesus says, if your child asks you for bread, will you give him a snake? And it's this contrast. If your child asks you for something good, will you give him something bad? And, and there's this exchange going on, and Jesus says this. If you, being evil, and the word is evil there, so he's calling people evil. If you, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more the Father will give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? And this is really gut-wrenching because it's sad to me today because Jesus says, you know how to give good gifts to your children, you're still evil. Isn't it amazing what is going on in our culture with parenting today that if knowing how to give good gifts and treat your children correctly is still missing the mark with God, oh my goodness, what is going on in our culture today? But it's important to understand that when Jesus says you being evil, he's saying you who are separated from God, Right? Because when Adam sinned, all sinned. You can read about this in Romans. This is a part of your homework. It says, when Adam sinned, all sinned. In the same way, when Jesus died, all what? Died. 
And this is very strange to us because it's like, well, I'm alive. In the garden, God said, in the day that you eat of it, you will surely what? Die. But Adam and Eve lived to be over 900 years old. So the spirit died in the garden. And at, and, and at the cross... When Jesus died, all died, because the very next part of that verse is, therefore, we are a new creation. We are literally in Christ, a new species. We're not the old human beings from Adam. We are no longer in the first Adam. We are now in the last Adam, which is Jesus Christ. That is something to really sit and ponder for hours to understand that in Christ, we all died. And that's why Paul always talks about, do you not realize that your flesh is crucified? Why are you returning to sin? That part of you died. And I'm not sitting here to try to make a statement that everybody needs to be perfect. We miss it sometimes. But he's saying, why do you continue to pursue the things that died instead of pursue the new life in you? Why do you think Jesus said, you must be born again? Why would you need to be born again if you never died. Our spirit died in the garden. Jesus is telling Nicodemus when he's having that conversation, you must be born again. And Nicodemus is like, oh, flesh, I can't enter my mother's womb and be born a second time. And he's like, you don't get it. That which is of the flesh gives birth to flesh. That which is of the spirit gives birth to the spirit. That's all in your homework. Get some awesome revelation from that. But I want to say this is because what Jesus is talking about is he says, when your eye is single, clear, and then he contrasts that with evil. He doesn't say when your eye is good. He does not say when your eye is of God. He says when your eye is single. So this word in the Greek is the word haplos. It appears only two places. And it's in these two scriptures, which is the exact same thing. Like I said, Luke 11, 34 through 36 is just the same recording of Matthew 6, 22 through 23. Remember, it's not 23 through 24. It's the only place this word appears. And so I did some research on it, and I found out that it does mean single, it does mean clear, it also means simple, and it's in contrast. Let me say it this way. It's not in contrast. It's made up of two words that are put together. The first word is alpha, which is just the word A. Right? Jesus says, I am the alpha, and I am the omega. If that was in Hebrew, it would be, I am the Aleph, letter A in Hebrew. I am the Tav, last letter of Hebrew alphabet. So Alpha is A. So this word haplos is made up of, it's comprised of two words put together, A, and then the other word means folded or braided. It's the Greek word plate, P-L-A-I-T. I had no idea what this was. Praise Jesus for Google. So I went on Google and typed in plate, and it shows braided hair. Man, Kyla, you are on that. So, so here would be, so, so when Jesus says in the Greek, as it's recorded in the Greek, your eye must be haplos. It's the word that means single. So it, it, your hair is one giant piece, and it's not folded, not braided, it's just all one. That would be single. Plated would be braided. And it means it could be three or more braids. It doesn't even just have to be three strands of hair. It could be more than that. That's what plate means. So Jesus is saying you must be single, not plated. And I just put this up here so that you have a picture. Because I was trying to explain the revelation to my wife, and she was like, uh-huh, great. And, 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 and she's like, I need a picture. And maybe if I need a picture, everybody else needs a picture. And, and since she's wiser than me, I put a picture. 
So plated is like braided, single is just all one. It can also be the same fabric. You could have a giant piece of fabric that's laid out, but the moment you begin to fold it, it is then considered plated. So Jesus does not say, keep your eye good. Keep it of the spirit. He says, keep it single. Not folded, not braided, not plated. Are you tracking with me? I see some heads nodding. That's good. The rest of you will get the revelation. <laughs> Jesus' name. Okay. So, and he says, but if your eye is evil, then you're full of darkness. And here's the craziest statement after this. He says, but if the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that? What does he mean by this? If you are not single-minded, simple-minded, clear-minded, one focus, one only, then your inside is darkness. And, but but if, your, if your mind's eye is not simple, you might actually think you are full of light. And if you think you are full of light, how great is the darkness, right? Because Satan comes as an angel of light. You know, people are always thinking they can spot the devil. He comes in the most subtle ways. He's not coming with a pitchfork and horns and a tail and like, you know, you see in movies or, or comic strips or things like that. He can appear as an angel of light. He did not appear as a bear in the garden. He did not appear as a lion that he could just bully them around. It says that he appeared as one of the most subtle of all creatures, crafty, trickery. If Satan was so obvious, then the world wouldn't be so easily swayed. Amen. Amen. Well, why are we talking about this? I'm going to tell you. I think that for many of us, and whenever I get these revelations, I immediately repent. How many of you endeavor to be closer like Christ? That's the whole reason we're doing this. I want to be as much like Jesus as possible. I want my children to grow up and go, you know what, Dad? I never saw Jesus ever come into my bedroom or come into the living room, but I assume that he's like you. I could die happy if my children grow up their whole life believing that. And it's not a boast. It should be our endeavor, because in the spirit, we are exactly like him. The only thing that's preventing this looking like him is we either don't believe it or we're easily swayed in our soul. And I believe this idea about being single-minded, clear-minded, simple-minded. Jesus says you must convert and become like what? Children. How many of you know children are pretty single-minded, simple-minded? Good or, good or bad, they have one focus. Even my kids now, they're like, they're focused on the fact of um, they had a sleepover with lots of kids this weekend. And they, like, that was their only focus. We could be like, what do you want for lunch? Are you excited about the sleepover? No, 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 no. What would you like to eat? I don't know. Like, are we going to set up a mattress downstairs? I mean, like, you just couldn't get them off. They were, they were single-minded. I don't have this scripture up there, but I encourage you to go um, as part of your homework. Uh, James 1, verse 8, and also James 4, verse 8. There is another Greek word that is mentioned and only mentioned twice in the entire New Testament, which is the word double-minded. And it's mentioned in James chapter 1, verse 8. And James chapter 4, verse 8. And James makes an interesting statement. He says, if you are double-minded, expect to receive, you guys got it, nothing from God. For you are double-minded and misguided in all of your ways. Unstable is the word. So James is actually the half-brother of, of the Lord Jesus. How many of you know that Mary and Joseph 
had children later, despite what some religions will tell you. James is the half-brother of Jesus Christ. And he mentions this double-mindedness in chapter 1, 8, chapter 4, 8. And it's the only place that that Greek word is mentioned. And when I looked up haplos, which means single, the antithesis of haplos is the word double. So James and his half-brother Jesus Christ are completely in sync on this concept that we must be single-minded. Now, what does all of this have to do with culture? Because I believe that if we're not teaching people on Sunday morning things that are applicable to what is currently going on in the culture, then we're missing it, right? Who cares how many memory verses you have if they're not applicable to what's going on in your own lives and in culture and everywhere else? So here's some what I call plates of what's going on in culture today, where we're getting off the single-mindedness and we're getting into plates, braids. How many of you know that when you see braids, you can't tell where one of those original strands begin and the other one's ends? It's complicated. It's mixture. It's another form of mixture. Jesus says, do not put new wine into what? Old wineskins. Do not sew a new patch onto an old garment. This word plate is the same thing. It's hair that's folded or garments that are folded and wrapped together. Riots and looting. Racism. I have controlled narrative, meaning the seven mountains, meaning what the media is saying is the same thing that the public schools are saying, which is the same things that businesses are talking about. Many businesses are the same things that celebrities are, you know, because I have no idea where we got to the point where we care so much about what celebrities think. I mean, what is that? So when I say controlled narrative, the seven mountains, I mean the seven mountains of culture that if you look hard enough, and even it's sad that it's infiltrating the church culture, is the same narrative, if you look closer, is being delivered on every mountain. Fear, COVID-19, abortion, global warming. How many of you know how uh, the earth is going to be destroyed? Uh, if you read your Bible, all of your hands should be in the air. Peter says that all of the elements of the planet will be melted with fervent heat. It will be destroyed by God. So fear not, global warming people. It ain't going down that way. And it's not like, well, are you taking a political stance? No, I'm trying to educate you that this is mass hysteria and craziness. Now, we need to love people because Jesus said, if the Romans and the Jews actually knew who I was, they would not have crucified me. And later it's repeated, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But they did not know. And if we don't have... What Jesus gives to us, if we don't have a spirit of knowledge and wisdom and stay single-mindedness, we get caught up in plates, folded things. Now, some people might go, well, how is racism a plate? Well, you know, don't, don't we believe that racism is bad? Well, of course we do. Peter says, or excuse me, Paul says, there is neither Jew nor Gentile, male nor female, slave nor free. We are one in Christ. That settles it for me. Did Jesus die for a specific nation, or did he die for all of the races, tongues, and tribes on the planet? All. All means all in the Greek. So I think Jesus settled the racism issue. But we get caught up in this thing, and it's a plate. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't take a stand against it, but I'm saying racism is a plate. If we were single-minded, we, we could go what my brother, I love my brother, uses this term a lot. Um, I'm going to start using it more. We need to go further down on the iceberg. What you see, the iceberg above the water, it could be two or three times larger underneath, up to ten times larger underneath. We need to go further down. Racism is just a manifestation of Hate. Hate is a manifestation 
of the devil. The devil hates white people, black people, brown people, pink people, green people. He hates all of mankind because we are in the, made in the image and likeness of God. This is why the devil hates us. But if he can get us caught up on, well, you know, let's hate each other because our skin is a different color, and let's hate each other because our eyes are a different color, or let's hate each other because you're a Democrat and I'm a Republican, and let's hate each other, and we just go down the list, and we get caught in our mind's eye on plates. I get caught up in that. I, like, stepped away from Facebook. It's getting weird and scary and crazy. People that are Christians, how many of you know that we should always be believers first and foremost and forever? But when you have things like COVID or racism or all of these things, it's interesting about how Christianity, and when I say Christianity, I don't mean like what the world describes Christianity. I mean being a sold out follower of the way, which is Jesus Christ. It's amazing how that takes a back seat to what goes on in the culture, as in I'm white first and then I'm a Christian, or I'm black first and then I'm a Christian, or I'm, you know, Hispanic first and then I'm a Christian. And people would never say that, but that's what it is. Yeah, it should. Always Christ first. But because these are hot-button issues in culture, our single-mindedness becomes, remember the other word is clear? It becomes cloudy. And we get clouded with the issues of the day. Now, should we stand against racism? Yes. Should we stand against abortion? Yes. But we need to have a narrative of Jesus and the devil. Because if it ever leaves that narrative, Satan will always change the narrative. Can I give you an example? If we move away from, the, from God being the, being the giver of life, and Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's pretty simple, right? Simple, single-focused. 50 years ago, abortion was considered evil. And why was it considered evil? Because we did not change the narrative that it is murdering the innocent. And Satan says, hmm, if I can get us away from this me and Jesus stuff and change the narrative, I can get this changed. So what does the narrative change? It's not about murdering babies. It's about women's health. It's not about killing the innocent. It's about my body, my choice. Now, I want you to hear my heart. If there is anybody in here who has had an abortion, I'm not here to judge you or condemn you. We offer grace and mercy and compassion and love because Jesus forgave all sinners and provided grace for all. But he changed the narrative. And now it's more commonly accepted because if we still had to say it's about the murder of the innocent, it's about Satan who hates the very image of mankind, and so he must destroy them. And that even means before that they are born. But because we don't live in a society that is that black and white anymore. It's either Jesus or the devil. Satan can change the narrative. Because we don't live in a biblical society of, to know how the end is going to play out with the elements being melted with fervent heat, we can have ridiculous conversations about global warming. Because we do not know that in Genesis, that the Lord God said in the beginning, he made them male and female. Well, people don't know this about God and haven't read Genesis, and I have a whole culture. The Satan is saying this at my fingertips. So I'm going to change the narrative and just say whatever you feel that you are, that's what you are. Biology, all of this stuff doesn't matter, because as long as I can keep it plated, keep it folded, keep it braided, 
People won't know where one end begins and the other one, or one end, one, one place begins and the other ends. Is this making sense? I'm here, and we should all be exposing the plan of the enemy, not jumping on a side of the cultural bandwagon. Because we're going to get caught in plates, in braids. Does this make sense? You have to see it. We're moving beyond flesh and blood. Jesus said, or excuse me, the, the uh, Apostle Paul said by the Spirit, we do not wrestle against what? Flesh and blood. But he did say what we do wrestle against. Principalities, powers, rulers, wickedness in, in heavenly places, all of these things. So what does this have to do with the original verse? Keep us single-minded. It's Jesus in the devil. It's the Spirit and the flesh. Let's keep it black and white. And when I say black and white, I'm not talking about a race thing. I'm saying keep it simple. And many times, and we're going to have to repent, it's Christians that complicate it. If we voted as followers of the way of Jesus Christ... Wouldn't that be amazing? But we wear labels of Democrat and Republican before our faith. Because we're not single-minded. And I'm not, I'm not putting anybody in one boat or the other. I'm saying, let's just start being single-minded. Let's start being clear-minded. Let's keep it Jesus and the devil. I remember somebody said it like this one time. Let's just keep it simple. God, good. Devil, bad. You know, it used to be the phrase K-I-S-S -S, as an acronym. Keep it simple, stupid. How about keep it spiritually simple? Let's just have the Holy Spirit viewpoint on everything. And I'm going to encourage you, brothers and sisters, if you can do this, you will see the plans of the enemy before they even unfold. You will see where it's going. Can I give you an example of something that I know what the enemy is doing? And maybe many of you already know this as well. We thought it was a big deal about uh, uh, homosexuals being able to be married. And you had people going, well, you know what? Let's just not call it marriage. You know, if you want to have a union, if you want to not be discriminated against in this country, okay. You can have a civil union together. That wasn't enough. Why wasn't it enough? If, we, if our taxes can be the same, if we can have shared property, if everything is identical, why must it be called marriage. This doesn't make sense, right? Because if it's about equal rights under the law, then it shouldn't matter the word we use. It should be about having the same rights. Am, am I correct on this? But why was the drive to redefine marriage? Because it's not about homosexuality. It is about the devil. And because marriage is Jesus is the husband and we are are the bride. And Satan hates marriage because it's another beautiful picture of Christ in the church. So it's not about redefining marriage. We're seeing in flesh and blood. It's about the devil behind it. And here's the thing. It's not enough for him to just go, well, now a man can marry a man or a woman can marry a woman, and it's called marriage. Let's redefine it. I guarantee you, and this is what I'm talking about, you can prophetically see the plans of the enemy. You will see a day, if it's not already going on, and I'm just not aware because I'm not always engrossed in culture, that people will marry multiple people. Do you, husband, take these three wives and enter into this union together. And now we, we, you're like, well, yeah, but we, we've had polygamy in the past. Okay, fine, but I'm saying it's going to become mainstream. I guarantee you, and I'm not against people that love their pets. Hear my heart. You will see people marry their pets. And I'm not saying that to make a joke. I'm saying marriage has been redefined. I guarantee you. We will see it. I guarantee you this, and I say this with a very heavy heart. There's going to be a time 
where grown people are going to marry children. It's going to happen. And it's going to be met with thunderous applause from the world. When you are single-minded, haplos in the Greek, you will begin to discern the times that we are in, and you will see the plans of the enemy before they are even unfolded. And that's really what we're doing when we're operating in spiritual gifts. When somebody gives up here and gives a word, and they say that God is stirring and moving arts in people, writing and painting and that kind of stuff, it didn't come from their mind. If you begin to see the person standing up here and delivering this as the person said it, you will not receive it. You must see it as literally the Spirit of God that this person is nothing but a tool that is opening their mouth for the Spirit to release the Word. If you do not see it that way, you won't receive it. Is it hear my heart. You, because some of these things are for you. And I have talked with people that was, that they're like, I think that really sounds like it's for me, it's for me. But because they are double-minded, and I'm not saying that in condemnation, I'm saying let's repent and because how many of you want to receive everything that God has for you? Amen. So let's stop being double-minded. He's given us the key in this scripture. Don't be folded. Don't be braided. Keep it simple. I was so, I'm going to share this and then we're going to move into the gifts. I was so sure that this word is for everybody here because here's the deal. I was researching this scripture all week and I went to a gathering on Friday and um, they line up on both sides and you go through and if people have words for you, they can bless you, they can pray for you. It's called a fire tunnel. I'm talking about like the fire of the Holy Spirit. And I had several confirming words, but one that was pinpoint accuracy. This person that prayed for me had no idea what my message was this week, didn't know that God was dealing with me in simplicity. It was actually two different people who had two different words. One was that they saw me that I was like a zebra, and I even feel like the shirt that I have on today is kind of prophetic. It's black and white. I didn't plan that. They said, I see you like a zebra. You see everything black and white. And I've actually been spoken over many times uh, about their, but it's always in the negative. Well, Josh, you're just so black and white. Got to be in the gray area a little while. But this prophetic word came, and it was in the positive. Don't let anybody tell you that this is negative. And then the other one that was pinpoint accuracy, they said, I'm speaking over you. And they used these words, simple and clear. And I waited till they prayed for everybody else. And I, and I talked to both of these individuals and I said, you have no idea how dead on you were. And I think that that's what God wants us to return to. Simple, black and white. Let's not muck it up in the gray area. Because in the gray area is where false doctrine comes from. In the gray area is where cultural things that start to invade into the church and pollute the Word of God. So we need to operate in spiritual gifts because there's some people that are living in the gray area. Well, I don't know. Well, what about this? And they need a sure word from the Lord right here. Don't get caught up in the whole, I don't know why I can't hear from God, or maybe I did, I don't know. That's why we do it. So as we move into this time, I want to give a little bit of instruction as the worship team comes. This microphone is going to be right in here. Do not do this. I want to give a word today. You take it out, it slides right out, and you put it on your chin. Unless you're afraid of COVID, you can hold it out here and we'll try to make the adjustment in the back. But you shouldn't be. So our worship time is four parts. First is expression. 
during this time, we're going to be singing worship music. Express yourself to the Lord. We have room over here. Um, I don't know. I, I know my daughters are like blasted from this week, and they've been doing Jesus stuff and friend stuff, but usually they're over here waving flags. If you have flags or you want to dance for the Lord, that's why we have these spaces over here. And um, for the rest of you who don't dance, don't judge those who do. And for the dancing people, don't judge those who are standing still. Just express yourself the way that the Holy Spirit expresses himself through you. Can I get an amen? Okay, so expression, raising your hands, whatever you need to do. If you want to sit there and put your head down and not even sing and just cry your eyes out, do that. Be led by the Spirit. So the first is expression. The second is communion. We have a, a communion table in the back, right there, right there. There's one over here, and there's one over there. At any time during this, feel free to get up and go and partake of his body and his blood. That is a form of worship. He said, do this to remember me whenever you gather together. Amen. Amen. Next, offering. Giving is worship. Despite what people think, like, oh, this is the part where they ask for my money. If you don't want to give, don't give. Give because the Bible says in the New Testament, give joyfully. Give freely. Don't do it as an obligation or a burden. And what you sow, you will also reap. So there's a box over here by the door, that black box. And then there's a black box over here. You can just drop it right in. And finally, Kyla, that was your cue. And finally, flowing in the gifts of the Spirit. We did it for the first time last week. It was beautiful. This is going to be up here. Again, just slide it off. Once you walk up here, the worship team is going to back down so that we can hear your word. Remember, please, this is not a time to come up and ask for a prayer request. Even though if you have a prayer request, sit quietly and put your hand in the air and people will come and minister to you. Or if you have a prayer request, send it. I'm not saying that's not important, but that's not what we're doing right now. This is for to be able to give a word of knowledge, to give a word of wisdom, to give something that will edify and bless everyone. If, there, if you receive something from the Spirit and it's for an individual in here, don't come up and make it general. Get up and go to that person and minister to them. If it's too loud in here, take them out there and minister to them. It's free. You don't have to feel like, oh, that somebody's going to look at me. People are going to be moving around and, and clapping and dancing um, and, and all of this, getting communion, walking over to the offering thing. It's not chaos. It's the flow. But like I said, this is for giving prophetic words, words of knowledge, exhortation, lifting people up. So let's try to keep it in that realm. And then we're going to continue to worship. I'm going to pray, and we're going to move into this time. Jesus, we are so grateful for the Holy Spirit. You said it is to our advantage that you go. And if you, who are the actual living Word of God, in the beginning was the Word, the with, er, Word was with God, and God was the Word, and the Word became flesh. You are the living Word, and you said the Word. It is better that I go, and it is to your advantage that I send the Spirit. Holy Spirit, we invite you into this place. We know that you dwell inside those who are filled with the Spirit, but we invite you to have your way. We invite you to, to, to come forth from our mouths, to come forth from, from our hands in the areas of healing and miracles so that people in this room that may need a healing or a miracle, that they will sit and raise their hand and other people will get a word to go over and begin to minister to them, to lay hands on them and to lift them up. We don't command you. We come against darkness, but we invite you to come against that darkness through us because we cannot do it without you. We are nothing. We are dead flesh that has been born again in our spirits so that one day we will be given new bodies and be like you. But until then, we know in part and we prophesy in part and we give words in part. And we do it as a child who walks and may fall every once in a while and we'll worry about that later. But we invite you, Holy Spirit, and we invite everybody here to be faithful in hearing 
from that Holy Spirit, from you, beautiful Holy Spirit, to come and be a blessing to others. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. 
All week, I've been thinking about the verse that's on the Seven Mountains um, <clears throat> signage out there that says, as we are, so are we. And the, sort of what Seven Mountains is built on is as we are, so as he, as he is, so are we in this world. Um, I work in the high school, Plano High School, and it's very, very diverse these days. And despite the fact that we haven't been in, in school, kids are still reaching out. And there's Christian kids that really want to know how to handle all this stuff that's going on in our world. And I pointed out to them this verse, as he is, so are we in this world. And we sort of bantered back and forth about what he actually is. And there are so many things. Wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. He's our savior. He's our healer. You can think of all kinds of, of songs that, that list words. But what he is most of all is love. And we have to somehow figure out how to be that love because I was trying to, trying to think about that and I love my children desperately. I would do anything for them. I am happy when they're happy. I am sad when they are sad. But despite that, Jesus loves them more than I do. And that is just the kind of love that we need to aspire to. And I want you to think about some of the things that you've seen on TV and videos this week. Think about George Floyd laying there on the ground with his hands handcuffed behind his back with that officer with his knee in his neck. Who does Jesus love more? Think about the, the, the high school protesters that are walking down the street quietly just trying to, to make a point. And then think about kids the same age that are taking baseball bats to Nike stores and carrying things out in a cavalier way and putting them in their car. Who does Jesus love more? Who does Jesus love more, Donald Trump or Joe Biden? Jesus loves us all the same, and he loves us more than we can ever imagine. And that is what I've told these kids that we have to be. We have to strive to be just like Jesus in the way that he loves. I want to say this directly to your pastor, Josh. Thank you. What you have said takes guts. You won't hear stuff like this everywhere. You're looking out for your people. You don't want them to be in a situation where they have no idea what's going on in the world. There's not too many prophets left, but I believe that God is going to be raising up more, and pe more people. Not to judge people, not to condemn them, not to feel superior to them, but just to lay things out according to what the Word of God says. So thank you for having the guts. Thank you for taking the responsibility as a shepherd of a flock to make sure that your flock is not going to be led astray somewhere. for grace what he did me he went up on that cross gave his life so we could tell other people what the blood of Jesus Christ is about and I thank him for that in Jesus name Amen
I want to give a confirmation to what Sue said. The Lord has been saying to me all week, um, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you. Not with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, not as you love yourself, but you, we need to love each other with forgiveness and mercy and grace and sacrifice and humility as Jesus has loved us and left heaven for us. And then I want to confirm the other thing that the Lord is speaking is we need to boldly speak the gospel wherever we go, on, whether we're on Facebook or in the grocery store or someone. I've had calls this week from people who I've been ministering to, but they're not saved people. And I just am, am saying, we know those people. We run into these people. Paul said, may I boldly proclaim the gospel. And this is what God is saying to us as in Seven Mountains. May we go out and boldly speak the gospel, which is Jesus loves you and he died for you. And I love you too, as he does. to heal some people this morning. I heard specifically um, right shoulder and lower back. Um, if there's anybody that fits either of those, um, maybe step in the back um, and I'll pray for you. I just want to make sure that what he said, right shoulder, lower back, this is important to me because if that's you and you've been asking the Lord to heal you, you need to step back there in faith and do it. Because I'm telling you, I've prayed with people before that have said, I heard a word and I know that was me and I was just too scared to do it and they literally missed their healing. I'm not saying that to condemn anyone. I'm saying if he called out your right shoulder or your lower back, you need to get back there right now because you don't want to ask God to heal you and then go, but I didn't want to go back there and get prayer. So I'm encouraging you. That is a word from the Lord. Please go back there if that is you.
Let's sing it one more time. We're going to be doing one more song. So if you know that the Holy Spirit is nudging you to come and give a word, whether it's here or to another individual, you got one more song to do that. And then we're going to dismiss. So we're going to flow. We're going to keep flowing. Everything that's been going on is complete.